Good evening and welcome to Lamp Post, where thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Here on Lamp Post, we answer your questions from the Bible. Tonight's question is an interesting one. Are you ready? Here it is. Should Christians get tattoos? First of all, I think we should answer the question, why do you want to get a tattoo? Because it's hip? Because you think they are pretty? Because you want to be accepted by a certain crowd? Because it's just something you always wanted to do? Or do you really believe it's the will of God for you to get a tattoo? For the born again Christian, the concern should be what pleases God, not what pleases us or what pleases someone else. The Christian goal is to be more like Christ. According to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, we are to allow the mind of Christ to be formed in us. And what was the mind of Christ? Well, for one thing, in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, the Lord said, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And in John chapter 6, verse 38, he said, For I am come down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. There are many things in the world that a Christian can do, but just because we can do it does not mean that we should do it. Paul expressed it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. That word expedient comes from a Greek word, sum fero, and it means conducive, advantageous, or good. There are many things that a Christian can do, but they are not conducive to being more like Christ or advantageous to our testimony or a good idea for conscience sake. We could talk about the fact that tattoos do not find their origin or history in Christianity, that they were often used in pagan religious ceremonies, they were marks for the dead, marks that they put on prisoners and criminals and associated with heathen cultures around the world. There's nothing remotely spiritual for the Christian associated with or tied to tattoos. But even if tattoos had none of these negative connotations and their history was one of medical use or forms of art or personal expression, the question still remains, why get a tattoo as a Christian? I've heard justifications for tattoos such as this. Well, it's not a sin to get a tattoo. Well, is that the only criteria that a serious Christian needs? Believers are held to a higher standard. In Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 26, the Bible says, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. Just because it's legal does not make it right. Or I've heard this one. Well, my tattoo is a form of witnessing. Well, when a Christian, Christian is a witness by their life and by their lips, they do not need a tattoo to do their witnessing for them. It reminds me of a story I read about a woman who was a stripper in nightclubs. And she said that she got saved and so now she strips for Jesus. Or a lady I talked with some years ago who professed Christ and she worked in a nightclub and said that her ministry was writing Jesus loves you on the napkins upon which she placed inebriating alcoholic drinks. It's sad. It's a sad day when Christians will use such justifications to excuse that which is not expedient. There are several biblical reasons why a Christian should not get a tattoo. Number one, God said not to. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 28 says, Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. 
I am the Lord. And why would the Lord say they weren't supposed to put marks upon their bodies? Because putting marks on bodies was the practices that were done by the heathen and God's people to be different and separate. Well, someone might say, well, that's just Old Testament Levitical law. That doesn't apply to today. Really? How about the very next verse in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29, that says, Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Is that just for the Old Testament too? Or is that another principle that we can practice in the New Testament? You see, there are practices that are abhorrent to God. And he commanded his people not to be involved in them. Why? Because they are his people. Number two, your body is not yours. I know we hear, a lot, hear that a lot today, especially concerning the abomination of abortion. The heathen worship false gods and have, or else they have no God at all but themselves. The heathen and the unsaved see their bodies as their own and therefore they can do whatever they want with them. However, the truth is that even as unbelievers, their bodies are not their own and will one day give an account of themselves unto God. They did not create themselves, nor did they will themselves into existence. They were created by God and their bodies therefore belong to Him by creation, whether they acknowledge it or not. One day they'll stand before God, their Creator an answer for their unbelief and their ungodly practices. Dear Christian, you belong to God by creation and by recreation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Those things that are passed away are the things of the old, unsaved, and heathenistic practices of the world. God is very clear as to whom you belong to. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning at verse 19, the Bible says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body belongs to God. He bought it with the price of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, you do not get to say what is done with it. He does. Now, what if I came to your house and started scribbling graffiti all over it, or I painted it fluorescent orange without your permission? How about when a tenant lives in someone else's house don't they have to get permission from the owner before doing such things? My dear friend, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit of God, and your body is not your own. Therefore, before you can do things like getting tattoos, you have to get God's permission, and He already said He doesn't give us permission. Number three, God has His own tattoo for your body. Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from God, my God, and I will write on him my new name. Did you hear that? Dear believer, God said that one day he's going to write on your body. God Himself has reserved the right to write on your body. He's not relegated that right to you or anyone else. When we take it upon ourselves to write on our own bodies, we are usurping the prerogative and authority of God. The only tattoo that will ever be placed upon my body will be what Jesus said. The name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. 
This is one way that I can glorify God in my body by keeping that body clean inside and outside, reserved for His name to be written on me. And so the answer to the question as to whether or not a Christian should get a tattoo is no. Which begs another question. What if I already have a tattoo? Well, if you got tattoos before you became a born-again Christian, you did it in ignorance of unbelief. And it is covered by the blood of Christ, just as all other sins and unpleasing things that we did before we were saved. If you've gotten a tattoo since you've been saved, you're still a child of God. You still have eternal life. And God is still your loving Father. Perhaps you did not know. Or even perhaps you got your tattoo in rebellion. Well, 1 John 1, 9 still applies. That if we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Determine to keep your body from this point onward for the Lord Jesus Christ and refrain from getting any more tattoos. Perhaps you're watching tonight and you're unsaved. You've never become a child of God. That means that you have never been born again into God's family by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. God loves you no matter what. No amount of tattoos can change that. He wants you to be His child and He has done everything necessary for that to take place. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. God's salvation is a free gift purchased with the death, burial, resurrection, and shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this gift is available to anyone and everyone who will receive it. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God wants you to be born again spiritually into His spiritual family. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And Paul wrote this in Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you'd like to be born again right now, wherever you are, whatever you have done, just bow your head right now and from your heart, tell the Lord Jesus you're a sinner and ask Him to forgive your sins and trust Him alone as your Savior, the payment for your sin. If you've trusted Christ as your Savior, we'd like to send you a free booklet to help you in your new Christian life. All you have to do is email me at pastor at graceofcalvary.com or send a note to 5542 Perry Highway, Erie, PA, 16509, and we'll send you this free gift for receiving Christ as your personal Savior. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you'll come back next week for another episode of Lamp Post. Goodbye, and God bless.